I'm Phil Steinberg. I'm a professor of political geography at Durham University. I'd like to talk for a few minutes about some of what we see in this exhibit on Aquatopia. Uh, the very term Aquatopia is interesting because it's kind of about how we project our dreams, our hopes, and our fears onto the sea, in part through attempts to understand the sea, but also through attempts to escape into it and, uh, and to escape away from it as well because the sea is both alluring and uh, creates fear and sometimes even disgust. And I want to talk about that in some of the uh, exhibits that are out here uh, in the gallery. Um, starting off, actually, in, in the first room, we see this juxtaposition of the mapping of the ocean uh, on the Ortelius map from the 16th century, uh, which on the one hand looks like an attempt to really scientifically understand the sea, to divide it into land and water and all that. And yet at the same time, we see sea monsters kind of creeping up into the ocean. So there's already the ocean exceeding our attempts to understand it, to know it. At the same time, right next to it, we have the Turner uh, painting of the sea monster, which is a painting of a sea monster, but also is not. And it's not really a painting of the sea. It's a painting of so much more. It's really a painting of what we feel, what we project onto the sea, our knowledges, our emotions, our attempts to understand, and our attempts to feel better about the sea in a way, to feel it's a space we have conquered. So we have these kind of incomplete attempts to conquer and know the sea going on in these two pieces of work that look actually quite different from each other in a lot of ways. Um, turning to these two uh, works here, uh, right by me, uh, these two photos, which are not technically a series, but you know, they clearly have a certain resonance with each other, um, both, first of all, involve the octopus, which itself is a fascinating creature in our attempts to understand the sea, uh, because, put simply, octopuses are really gross. You know, they're kind of slimy, they're scary, they're hard to understand, they don't have a clear head which is part of, I think, what freaks us out, because we're used to the head being where we focus on the mind being. So these seem to be all, you know, all, all body, all stuff. And, uh, and yet at the same time, as with just about any sea creature, we also try to understand it, we try to normalize it, we try to quite literally bring it into the home, you know, whether that's the goldfish tank or more often actually through food. Food is a key way in which we bring nature, we domesticate nature, and we, uh, we control it, we understand it, and we make nature part of us. So what we've got here is both of these cases, we have the nature of the sea, in fact some of the most nature-y part of the sea, this so unhuman octopus, and we bring it onto the bed, we bring it into our mouths, and yet at the same time it clearly doesn't belong in either of those places. Quite literally, the, you know, the octopus on the bed is seriously out of place. The, the pasta um, is you know, exceeding Bjork's mouth. It's taking over. Uh, so we try to bring it in, we try to naturalize it, we try to normalize it, but at the same time the sea you know, exceeds itself and it actually even exceeds us. Uh, we see that in some of the other exhibits in this gallery, in this particular room as well. Uh, the pot of mussels, which on the one hand is this very simpli simplistic statement of Belgian identity, and yet ultimately the mussels become bigger than the pot. So again, we try to build our culture around ocean nature but we don't really succeed at it. The ocean nature becomes bigger. Likewise, the vase with the shells growing out of it, we have something similar going on. Uh, we have a fusion happening, nature and, and culture and art join together, but they also, uh, it becomes actually dysfunctional at the same time. It's about destruction and decay, as well as life and growth and birth. And those are actually also themes that we see coming out in quite a lot of the other works uh, in the gallery. Uh, the ocean is a space of life, um, of sea creatures, uh, but also of death. Um, several pieces, the video of the floating corpse, the Davy Jones locker painting of the ship going down, and in that ship going down, you have the life of the sea going, coming up at the same time. And so death and life are joined together in the churning of the water. Uh, I guess the final point that I want to sort of bring out that you see quite a bit in this exhibit is these attempts to know the sea through science. And there's quite a bit of, of science that goes on. Science is one of the major ways we encounter the sea. You know, on the one hand, we try to wish away the sea through transport, 
uh, through the idea that it's a surface you can get across, but scientists are always questioning that and saying there are things to actually know in the ocean. And so uh, in one room in particular, we have a series of um, sort of coastal erosion dynamics. And so you're understanding these scientific processes of land and sea meeting together. You have the scientific drawings of, uh, it's very technical, scientific drawings of marine life that actually end up not telling you a whole lot about marine life, but produce beautiful art. So you have the, the art actually there, just as in, in the case of the spaghetti eating, you have the food, the sea, exceeding our attempt to consume it or turn it into Belgian culture, in the case of the muscle pot. Uh, in, in these technical drawings, you have the attempts to, to know the sea, and yet, at the same time, you actually use the sea to create something for us, which is, a, a last a good sort of point to end on, because the sea does, in the end, even as it is uh, intimidating, as it takes over, as it's uncontrollable, it's also creative and generative. And so it becomes something that we dream with, something that we think with, and something that we use to actually create our own aquatopias.